So the next part of the build I'm looking at is the bicep. You can see I've got quite a few of the parts printed already. There's still quite a few more to go. This seems to have uh, a worm gear mechanism very similar to that what we saw in the shoulder. Um, I seem to be having a bit more success with this this time. I was struggling a bit with the shoulder. But this newer printer seems to be printing the parts quite a bit better. So there's a, a gear here that slots into this hole and then the worm gear will drive that. So two of these are arrived today. Um, they're the HS805BB high-tech servos. Uh, we're going to use these in the bicep. We'll need some more for the shoulder as well. Um, as you probably know, these have to be modified, which I'm not really looking forward to, but should be interesting. So we have to uh, take the potentiometer out from inside um, so that we can mount it remotely outside. So the first thing to do is to remove these six screws. Okay, that exposes uh, this circuit board. Um, we can't get in here unless we unsolder these three connections here. So I'm kind of um, removing the solder from these three points here. So I'm using this solder braid to try and pull the solder away from the, the joints. And I've got most of it away, but I've then tried to prise the board up whilst heating it at the same time to try and get it to come free. I think it's just about there. Yeah, so you have to kind of try and heat all three up as you try and prise it off. Um, but that's that's come free now so we can actually get the board off. So then you, once you get the board out of the way, you, this is what we're trying to get access to down here is the uh, potentiometer is just down there. So, so it's a little dark, but you can just see there's a screw down there that we need to to get out. The potentiometer is down there. I can see it quite clearly, but the camera just won't show it up. Okay, so what I've done next is I've pushed the three cables through the original grommet. They're really tight, but you can get them through there. That'll just save me having to cut a hole in the case. It would have been cleaner to um, solder new longer cables on to these three points, but I didn't want to mess around soldering too much around the board. There's a chip there, I don't want to make that too hot. There seems to be a little bit of glue around these cables as well. 
I just didn't want to mess around with that. It's going to be a little bit ugly, but we'll have to um, extend these cables. So the next thing we need to do is modify the gears. Now that we've got these um, long bolts out, the casing actually comes apart. And what we need to do can just see there's a so there's a lug here on this gear that's a stop to stop it from turning too far but we need to remove that to chop basically chop that whole piece off so that it will allow the gears to perform continuous rotation they'll have no stop that they hit so it's a case of cutting that off so there's the lug removed. So there you can see I've removed that stop from here. I guess the stop just hit against the gear as it turned around to that point. Unless there's something in there. Oh yes, there is. There's a There's the stop there that it would hit. So the lug we just removed would, would have hit against that. Yeah, there's there's two. There's one. So there's one here and one here. But now we've removed it, it will be able to turn all the way around. So we just pop the top back on. So the next step will be to resolder this board back on. I fed the three wires that were connected to the potentiometer through the original grommet so I didn't have to cut any of the uh, casing away. Um, not sure what to do with these. I could put a plug right on here um, or I could put a servo extension cable on there but I think I'm going to leave it for the moment to see how long the cables actually need to be. Okay, so this one doesn't want to go in. seem to line up for some reason. Four corner ones are lining up. And two middle ones. 
and I got it back to front. go one way round, not the way I had it. There's no need to over tighten these. Don't want to wring them off. Got a bit of grease on it. Just need to clean that off a bit. So basically, the servo's reassembled. Um, we've got access to the potentiometer cables, and I've got the potentiometer here. So I'll probably desolder these little bits from here and. Um, put some longer cables on just so we can play around So this is where I'm at um, I've got the So this servo that's fitted here is Gonna have to be swapped out because this one hasn't been modified see this has just got the standard uh, Cable coming out of it. Whereas this one over here is the one that I modified earlier with the breakout cables there now for the potentiometer um, so we're going to have to swap those over but what I'm looking at at the moment is just this the, the actual potentiometer um, now the way this works is is this little rotary part of the potentiometer has to fit into this center of this gear so that it can monitor the position of that gear um, that's going to be a bit tricky because that currently doesn't fit in there I'm going to have to file that rectangular hole out which is really fine um, and also this has to fit into this piece into this square so that when that sits on top of there it lines up with that hole which is going to be pretty amazing if that fits in there so you see that you can see the rectangular hole just down in there um, so the idea is this potentiometer has to fit down in there and go into that hole I'm currently filing out this square to get this potentiometer to fit because it's a, a little tight it's nearly there but one thing that's concerning me is which way round does it go because we can position it with the pins um, the electrical connection pins can either be on this side or this side I don't think that makes any difference to the operation because it's just being rotated round that makes no difference at all I'm just wondering if it makes any difference as to where the cables exit are they going to foul anything or are they going to be um, easier to route if I do it one way or the other I've got no idea so I don't know 
how that's supposed to go there there does seem to be some kind of locating lug down in there on on this side um, so I don't know if it, that indicates that's where the pins go on the same side or if that's absolutely nothing to do with it oh I see there is a locating lug really quite difficult to see but there's a locating lug there on the top of that potentiometer so that obviously goes into that little groove down in there I presume so that's probably answered that question so I'll just file that out a bit more okay so that's that's fitting in now um, if you can see it's, it's not entirely flush um, that's not flat in there but it does sit flat if you push it down try and get it the other way can we see it so it does it will fit sorry camera won't focus but that yeah okay yeah so that is in there now but okay so that is in there now uh, it's not entirely flush I'm not sure if it's supposed to be or not um, trying to see down there whether that pin is in the locating lug it's a little hard to see on camera I believe it is just in that locating lug so I presume that's as far down as that goes um, there is there is quite a bit sticking through I don't know if that's enough um, so the next challenge is to actually make it fit down in this hole that's really small I'm going to need something really small to file that out So I've got a square file that is uh, tapered off at the end, which will just fit in there. So I'll give that a little file out with that. Okay, so that's now fitting down in there. It didn't take too much filing out. It's a bit easier than I thought. Um, it's quite tight. I'm not sure uh, whether everything's gonna line up. We put it all back together. Let me try and reassemble that. So I pop the gear back in. Potentiometer's in the in the hole. Goes that way round. Um, I seem to have been quite lucky because let me try and do that again to show you. I put that on there. That does look pretty central down there. And it's sort of almost, because the gear rotates, I could have put that gear in any position. Um, it seems I've just put it in quite lucky that the slot is sort of fairly horizontal on our screen. And the potentiometer also seems to be um, fairly f in that same direction. So that was a Bit lucky really um, so I pop that down in there so it seemed to go on awfully easy I thought that was going to be difficult but it just went on really easy and uh, so I couldn't really tell whether it's actually gone down into that hole that we're trying to locate it in but if you look on the other side it's a little hard to see on the camera but that does appear to be in the hole so I can't quite believe that but that was awfully easy okay um, I guess the next step is going to be swap the servo over um, for the modified one. And so I've taken this servo off. Um, I want to make sure that this can rotate freely before I 
attach the servo and I'm just looking at it and there's a screw just fouling on that edge there. I have filed that back before but it's still catching just in there. Uh, so I think that's important to get that clear before we start reassembling things. So I quickly filed down here on this curve. Um, just, just down there. That seems to be rotating quite freely now. So it doesn't look like these cables have to be too long because the potentiometer is just there. So they probably are about the right length. What I'm going to do is put some of this black braiding on just to tidy things up. Okay, so that's now on there. So before we reassemble it, I want to put some power on the servo. Um, and just put a signal on the yellow cable to tell it to move to a certain position and then manually turn the feedback potentiometer to trick it into thinking it's in that position or not and we should see the the servo rotate and that will hopefully will tell us if this gearing is going to work okay so i've connected up uh, an arduino board and taken a signal from pin 9 to give me the pulse width modulation signal for the servo. Uh, that's been programmed to move the servo to position 90, which is the centre. So if we rotate the potentiometer, we should see the, the gears start to turn. I think they're sticking a little bit somewhere up here. You can kind of hear it trying to move and then stopping. And then when the servo reaches the, the centre, it stops. So if I turn it one way, it turns one way. And if I turn it the other way, it goes back the other way. And in the centre it stops. So in theory it works. So I've programmed the servo to sweep backwards and forwards. Um, it's a little confusing what's going on here, but when you think about it, it does make sense. Uh, the potentiometer is just uh, not being controlled at all. It's just sitting there in free air. Yet the servo seems to be doing what we've told it to do, even with no feedback. But when you think about it, it's just the servo never reached, it thinks that it's never reached its final position. But the software has been programmed to tell it to move to a different place. So. Now, there's, there's something binding going on. It's really grinding in here and I've looked carefully at it and I still think it's these screws down here. I think they're still touching on there. So I'll give that another little file, see if that helps it. I've also realised that this screw is catching on this top piece as well. Um, as the screws turn around past here, they're actually catching on this top piece and they've just they're marking it up slightly, so that could be the cause of some of the problem. I'll give that a little file as well. So as you can hear, it's still grinding quite a bit, so there must be something not quite right inside the gears themselves. Because I don't think it's these screws anymore. coming from up the top here somewhere. So maybe there's something in there that needs filing out. So I've put a bit of white grease in there now. That seems to have made quite a bit of difference. Um, sorry I've closed it up so you can't see it, but I've put 
a little bit of grease at the top of the worm gear and at the bottom of the worm gear basically just where it's making contact with the case eventually I'll fill the whole thing full of grease but it seems fine at the moment I use this white grease um, as you can see it's now running a lot smoother So I think I'll call it a day for now. Uh, we'll finish the video here um, and we'll carry on with the bicep in the next video. Thanks for watching and... Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.